Where are the Jenkins system logs? Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.387.2. Let's go ahead and take a look at the documentation on viewing logs for Jenkins. Now, the link to this documentation is down in the description. What we're specifically taking a look at is the system log. Now, if we take a look at this section, logs on the system, we can see there's callouts for Linux, Windows, Mac OS, War, and Docker. So let's go to the bottom and work our way up. If you're looking for the system logs within Docker, you're going to do Docker logs with the container ID, and then you'll see the system logs for that process. If you're just running the war file, then what you're going to be doing is taking a look at the Jenkins home directory. Now, if for some reason the Jenkins home environment variable is not set, the log will be written to the .jenkins log directory that's underneath the base user. If you're running on Mac OS, the log should be at var log Jenkins Jenkins log, unless it's been customized using the org Jenkins CI P list. For Windows by default, the logs are going to be within Jenkins home, Jenkins out. Unless, of course, much like what we saw in the other places, it was customized within Jenkins XML. Now, for the example in this video, we're going to be taking a look at where the system log exists when it was installed via RPM. Now, whether you've installed via RPM or DEB, it's going to be similar, a little different, but in the end, it's going to act just the same. So in this case, by default, if you want to take a look at the system logs, you're going to run journalctl-u Jenkins or Jenkins.service to be more explicit. If you want to customize where that log lives, then you're going to run systemctl edit Jenkins and make a change to the environment variable. Now, that's what we're going to do. So let's go over into our Jenkins controller, which again, we've got a 2.387.2 Jenkins. Before we go into the shell, let's take a look at one place. We'll go to Manage Jenkins, System Log, and then click into All Jenkins Logs. What you'll see here is a list of certain entries that are from the system log. So if we take a look here, the very first line is the Jenkins home directory found at ENV vars. And then we see listed all plugins, prepared all plugins, started all plugins. Let's go over into our controller and take a look using journal CTL. So if we say journal CTL dash U Jenkins, I could say Jenkins or Jenkins.service. If we scroll right, what we'll see is a much longer version of what we just saw within the controller itself. We do see these infos for started initialization, listed all, loaded all jobs, until finally we get to, down at the bottom, Jenkins is fully up and running. Now, when you're using journal CTL, what that means is the contents of the system log aren't actually being written to a file. So what I want to do is I want to be able to go ahead and have the contents of my system log written out to a file. Now, in older versions of Java, that location would have been var log Jenkins, Jenkins.log. Now, if we go back over to the documentation that we just saw, if we want to customize the log location, we're going to do a systemctl edit Jenkins and add this following. Well, where does this come from? How do I know that this is the value? Let's go back into our shell. I'm going to quit out of journal CTL, and I'm going to type systemctl dash dash full edit Jenkins. Now, because I'm running on a Fedora-based system, I need to specify the dash dash full in order to be able to see this full list of the options that I can use to configure my Jenkins service. If I was running on a Debian-based installation, the dash dash full isn't required, although it doesn't hurt to go ahead and use it. What we're going to be looking for is the environment variable that was listed in the documentation, which was Jenkins underscore log. And if we go ahead and search for that, Jenkins underscore log, we'll see it's listed there. And then we come up with the environment variable. Now, anything here that is not commented out, like working directory, means that this is actually a live value that's being used within the systemd process, much like environment Jenkins home, pointing at var lib Jenkins. These are live. But notice with Jenkins log, it is commented out. So what I'm actually going to do, instead of pulling it from the documentation, I'm going to copy this environment variable. So we'll copy that. I'm going to quit out of my system control edit with the dash dash full. And now I'm just going to do system CTL edit Jenkins. Now I already had some overrides set up for my process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'll just insert in this environment. Now notice the environment for Jenkins log is no longer commented out. So once we restart the process, then Jenkins log should be written to, in this case, the percent %L will expand to var log Jenkins, Jenkins.log. Let me go ahead and save this. 
before I go there, let's go ahead and CD over to var log. We'll notice here that there is a Jenkins directory already existing. This directory was created during the installation when we did a DNF install. If I CD into Jenkins and I list out all the files that are within that directory, you'll notice that there is nothing in this directory at this point. Now, one more thing I want to call out here. Let's go back over and do our journal CTL dash u Jenkins. And we'll go down to the bottom. Note the time that's here, 9.12. In fact, let me expand this out so we can see a little bit more as we're going. Notice that we have a lot of information in the file. We see the started line here at 9.12.15. If we scroll back up, we'll see a stopped and starting. Then we have everything here in the middle that are the details of the startup process. Now keep this in mind after we do the restart. So let's quit out of this. We'll say systemctl restart Jenkins. Now that the process has restarted, let's run our journal CTL one more time. I'm gonna to go to the bottom and you'll notice now, remember the last time was at 1912, I did a stop at 1350 and then we see that the stop succeeded, which is what we expect. But notice here, we see the starting of Jenkins here at 135024. We see a running from and then a started. What we don't see is everything here in the middle. So now if we quit out of journal CTL and take a look now within our var log Jenkins directory, we'll now see our Jenkins log. And if we less this file, what we'll see is everything that we used to see over in journal CTL, but now it's all in this file called Jenkins.log. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.